So in this clip, we'll talk about fixed exchange rates and specifically a system of fixed exchange rates for a small open economy on the assumption of an open capital account so that uh, capital can flow in and out of the country. And uh, there are three points that uh, I want to emphasize specifically. First is that monetary policy is pro-cyclical. Pro-cyclicality pro here means that uh, monetary policy uh, exacerbates the business cycle rather than uh, dampens it. And uh, we'll look at that uh, look at that in a bit more detail in a second. Uh, regarding stabilization, stabilization policy, fiscal policy trumps monetary policy. Uh, so we'll see that monetary policy is ineffective uh, um, under these particular assumptions with a fixed exchange rate and an open capital account, whereas fiscal policy is uh, very effective. And third, uh, the possibility of a uh, balance of payments crisis. So BOP here stands for balance of payments crisis, uh, which means that uh, an expected devaluation can drain reserves from the central bank and lead to an ultimate crash of the currency. And uh, we'll see how that plays out in this system of uh, fixed exchange rate with an open capital account. So let's begin with one here and see um, how uh, monetary policy is pro-cyclical. MP is pro-cyclical. <coughs> We're going to work here with a familiar model, namely uh, a graph that shows in the upper part the exchange rate exchange rate determination uh, versus the rate of returns and in the lower part uh, real cash balances so that uh, we have up here uh, a rate of interest and <coughs> so this is the domestic rate of interest can be earned on deposit and the other curve here is the foreign rate of interest uh, plus the expected exchange rate change where under a system of fixed exchange rate the uh, expected exchange rate change is supposed to be zero. So we have this point here which we're going to call E bar which is the fixed exchange rate that the monetary authorities are targeting. So in the lower part then of course we have uh, our real money supply and money demand function L which depends on Y and R or in this case R star since uh, <coughs> we must uh, equilibrate uh, the domestic interest interest rate directly with the world interest rate or the foreign interest rate. So, uh, so again the question is uh, that uh, the problem is that monetary policy is pro-cyclical. So what do we mean by that? So let's suppose that uh, the business cycle takes off and we have an expansion here. Uh, now, how do we show that in this diagram? Well, uh, the money demand curve shifts out as income increases and uh, that increases the demand for, for cash to conduct transactions and we have supposedly a new interest rate equilibrium here which would require an appreciation of uh, the currency. So um, under a flexible exchange rate system the exchange rate would, would fall, would appreciate and uh, um, in order to satisfy that R is equal to R star plus E hat E. <coughs> where that E hat E is the expected exchange rate depreciation. Now uh, the authorities want to maintain a fixed exchange rate which means which means that they need to accommodate the uh, changing conditions in the domestic uh, financial markets. So they need to get to this point here, the blue point. Uh, let me make some space there. So. Uh, rewrite the label 
right next to it. So now we're we need to get to the blue point. How do we get there? Well, we have to increase the money supply and accommodate uh, the change, which means that we maintain the initial interest rate so that we can maintain this equilibrium and maintain this exchange rate so that the pr this pressure on the exchange rate is uh, removed. Now, how is that monetary policy pro-cyclical? Well, you know that an increase in the money supply or a loosening in monetary conditions um, stimulates activity. So in this sense here, as activity already rises from Y1, this Y1 to Y2, uh, we accommodate this change without allowing the rise in the interest rate so that, the, um, that we can maintain the exchange rate. <coughs> and in that sense, monetary policy is pro-cyclical. Let's do a second example. Second example with the same diagram, E, R, M over P, Again, we have our initial money supply, the demand, money demand function here, Y and R, and that equilibrium implies uh, domestic interest rate, uh, which at the intersection with the foreign interest rate uh, gives us that initial fixed exchange rate, E bar the targeted exchange rate the monetar uh, monetary authorities want to maintain. Now let's assume the reverse example so let's assume a, do uh, a domestic recession, a contraction so that instead of an expansion from Y1 to Y2 we have a contraction from Y1 to Y2 and money demand falls. Now so this is L Y two R, where Y two now is smaller than Y one, and we have a, a a recession. That would imply an interest rate here, so that there's up uh, is upward pressure, upward meaning pressure for uh, a depreciation of the exchange rate. Um, in order to maintain equilibrium in the foreign exchange market to remove that pressure the monetary authorities have to contract the money supply and push this hold on let me do this in the appropriate color blue so we have this we get back to this point and we have here an M S two over P, so we can which again means that we can maintain this interest rate in order to maintain this foreign exchange market equilibrium in order to maintain this this uh, exchange rate. However, the contraction in uh, income, the contraction in GDP, might be exacerbated by the contraction in monetary policy. So that um, <coughs> again, monetary policy must be pro-cyclical under a fixed exchange rate. Let's go to a new page and a new the, the second topic, namely uh, stabilization policy. Stabilization. Uh, that's hard to read but you may forgive me. Um, quickly a very quick review of the <coughs> of the AADD model. We have uh, two curves here. The AA curve describes uh, the equilibria. Each point describes each each curve. Each point on this on this curve describes an equilibrium in uh, the foreign exchange and domestic financial markets, uh, which means that uh, we can uh, describe causality in this manner. Uh, given the level of income, 
uh, we have an equilibrium uh, ex uh, exchange rate um, and a higher uh, income implies a more depreciated exchange rate. So the higher the income, the lower the exchange rate, uh, sorry, a more appreciated exchange rate. How's that? Well, higher income uh, leads to higher interest rates in the domestic financial market and the higher interest rate um, requires an appreciation um, against the fundamentally expected exchange rate so that there's higher uh, future depreciation to equilibrate uh, the financial market. So um, let's take this out and do the other part, the DD curve, which describes uh, all the points uh, for goods market equilibria. And here, causality works in this direction. So given an exchange rate, we get a certain level of output and a higher exchange rate, so a more depreciated exchange rate, implies higher income, higher GDP through the net export channel. So uh, exports to the rest of the world increase as the exchange rate depreciates. So with that uh, lightning fast review, uh, let's look at monetary policy. Monetary policy is ineffective under a fixed exchange rate. So if we have here an E bar that the authorities want to maintain, here's our AA curve and our DD curve. And now suppose the monetary authorities want to stimulate activity by loosening monetary policy, which implies uh, such a shift of the AA curve to AA2, how would they get that? Well, they would buy domestic assets in order to increase the money supply, but as you can see, such an equilibrium would imply a more depreciated exchange rate. <coughs> would imply a more depreciated exchange rate since domestic interest rates fall in the domestic financial market. In order to counteract that pressure, in fact, the monetary authority must uh, sell foreign assets for domestic currency and thus would get back right to this point and a monetary policy to control or to stimulate to stabilize domestic activity is in fact ineffective. What about fiscal policy? In the fiscal policy case uh, labeled that FP here, so MP for monetary policy and FP for fiscal policy. What about the fiscal policy case? Again, we have our AA and our DD, and we have here an E bar that the authorities want to maintain. Suppose now that we get uh, fiscal expansion. Fiscal expansion to DD2, which means that we will get to this point. Now, uh, that blue point implies a more appreciated exchange rate, so there's pressure for the exchange rate to appreciate since uh, the higher level of output uh, leads to higher interest rates and uh, to satisfy the no arbitrage condition uh, against the expected exchange rate, we need to have appreciation today. How can the monetary authorities counteract that pressure? Well, simply by leading to a shift of the AA curve to AA2 so that uh, basically accommodating the expansion and maintaining the initially low interest rate leads to re-equilibration of, um, of the foreign exchange market at the desired E-bar. Uh, so we, can, we could uh, flip back here to the previous page that is essentially the left-hand case here. So it is y, the shift from Y1 to Y2 in the left diagram here could come from fiscal policy and uh, you'd have the pressure in the upper part 
to appreciate let me label it to appreciate to this point uh, but then if you get accommodation so increase in the monetary uh, in the money supply uh, the interest rate can be maintained and the exchange rate can be maintained that is uh, what we're seeing here for fiscal policy you see that the fiscal policy uh, leads not only to this initial shift here from the black initial equilibrium to the blue one but further to the green one so in that sense fiscal policy is super effective under a fixed exchange rate regime now new page last part the balance of payments crisis so what do we mean by balance of payments crisis uh, for, for this part we're going to go back to uh, this diagram where we have uh, foreign exchange market and real money supply so the domestic financial market uh, in the diagram together and we're going to draw our initial situation as we are quite used to by now here we have the ter determination in the lower part determination of the interest rate uh, which gives us an R here and then against that uh, the foreign foreign interest rate and the desired E bar <coughs> now what is the uh, driver of the balance of payments crisis so let's suppose that uh, the authorities want to maintain this E bar but that uh, the market does not believe that uh, the authorities are able to or are really committed to uh, to doing so so um, the market and uh, market participants in fact believe that uh, there will be a depreciation or there will be a devaluation so that a devaluation is expected what do we mean by that well if this E bar here is the current exchange rate then it is assumed that in the next period uh, we will go to say E1 so that there is now uh, an expected depreciation of E1 minus E bar over E bar and this is E hat E now for the fixed exchange rate to be maintained R needs to be equal to R star uh, and you can see that the no arbitrage co uh, condition uh, under a fixed exchange rate requires that the expected exchange rate change is zero. Uh, if market, market participants move to expect the difference between the current fixed exchange rate and the future exchange rate, this term is not equal to zero and we get to a disequilibrium in the expectations. How does that show in the diagram? it implies a rightward shift of this curve so that we have here uh, R star plus E hat E um, where for the initial black one E hat E would be equal to zero but uh, now E hat E is not equal to zero now uh, we have a new equilibrium here that implies upward pressure so pressure for depreciation on the current exchange rate if the monetary authorities do not want to uh, let the currency depreciate today they need to get in fact to this point in order to get to this point they need to raise the domestic interest rate they need to raise the domestic interest rate how do they do that the money demand function does not shift it must be a contraction in uh, the money supply so uh, if the reason for the expected devaluation is that uh, the domestic business cycle is expected to turn into a recession then 
contraction of the money supply exacerbates the situation. Again, we have this pro-cyclical monetary policy, uh, but crucially, uh, at this in this situation here, the domestic interest rate is less than R star plus the expected exchange rate change, and uh, because of this. Uh, violation of the no arbitrage condition the market market participants are buying foreign currency assets and essentially the central bank must sell foreign currency assets and in order to sell foreign currency assets uh, the, the central bank uh, has to uh, give up its reserves so uh, in order to get from this inequality back to an equality to satisfy the no arbitrage condition the central bank risks running out of reserves and when it does when the central bank gets close to having no reserves then at some point the devaluation must come so there is in fact uh, an element of um, uh, self-fulfilling self -fulfilling expectation, uh, a frequently uh, apparent phenomenon of uh, financial crisis. So to briefly recap, we have uh, we have a fixed exchange rate system with an open capital account, and in such a system, monetary policy is pro-cyclical, exacerbates the business cycle and in fact is ineffective for stabilization. Fiscal policy on the other hand is very effective and uh, the pro-cyclicality of monetary policy and uh, the desire of the central bank to maintain exchange rates can threaten uh, the stock of uh, central bank reserves and, and can threaten the credibility which can lead to these balance of payments crisis.